Hello, and welcome to the Batman Eternal Vlogs, because I've got nothing better to call them. Vlogs, maybe? Batman ones? I, I don't know. Uh, let's just go with Batman Eternal Vlogs right now. As I mentioned in a video not long ago, I am going to be spending about the next year uh, just doing a rough and tumble quick rundown of what I think of every issue of the year-long weekly comic event Batman Eternal. So, today was uh, finally the day in question. I have the first copy right here. So, let me just give you all a better look at it beyond bag and board. This is the cover. It's actually a really pretty freaking awesome cover. We've got Batman kind of in a bloody shot right there. We've got... Uh, We've got a bunch of his allies and enemies, right, all gathered here on the cover. He he appears to be standing atop of the imprisoned from the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a nice cover, and I hope it's indicative of what we're going to get over the course of this next year. We have just a variety of characters up in that uh, up in that cape of his. I can identify, I, I see like Red Hood, I see Red Robin, yum, it's a requirement, uh, I see Alfred, I see the Riddler, I see, uh, I see Gordon, I see Batgirl, I see Catwoman, seriously enough I don't see Nightwing, so that's the first cause for concern, and I don't see the Joker, so I wonder where they are on here, but Everything else seems to be in order. There's that ongoing fear that maybe we're, uh... Eh, Dick Grayson might die. With the, uh, the cancellation of Nightwing that's about to happen, there, there is a rumor right now that Dick Grayson's gonna die. I hope not. Honestly, if you want my own theory on it, uh, Teen Titans is also about to get cancelled. Which is how, uh, Tim Drake is gonna be in this series, because Tim was busy leading the Titans. Honestly, I think DC is going to bide their time a little bit, and, you know, maybe this is overly optimistic, but I think we might get a more traditional Teen Titans team here in a little bit, and maybe maybe there won't be Teen Titans, maybe they'll be THE Titans, maybe they'll have to take on a different title like that. They were called the Titans in the uh, early 2000s and that, so that all would work out just fine as far as I'm concerned. So, no real word on where Dick Grayson's going to be. Teen Titans is a about to be cancelled if it hasn't been already I don't know if that comic came out today I've not been following it I this is honestly the first series in the new 52 I'm following so it took over two years but I I am curious there's there are reasons and I'll get into those in another vlog but there are reasons I'm very curious about this one and very interested to see where it goes so that's that um I need to stop looking at this back cover because the back cover advertises this like incredible set of Nightwing collectibles where like you get his symbol and you get his Ascrimia sticks or however it's pronounced and they look awesome and it looks like they light up and everything and oh man and it's by a company called Triforce <laughs> I would expect them to be making Zelda merchandise they weigh 25 pounds, apparently. Includes six additional darts, two mementos from Dick Grayson's past, the badge of Robin from his former costume, as well as the letter left to him by his mother. That's very, very cool. It's an Arkham City set. It looks really nice, but I'm sure it's going to be way out of my price range, so I should stop looking at it, because odds are I'm not going to be able to get it. <laughs> oh, boy. I was also at my... Uh, one of my comic book stores, I go to a couple, and I picked up uh, one of these fellas. <laughs> Scribble Knots Collectibles. Uh, you probably saw the Manchu review. Um, so now I'm at two. I've got, I've got Maxwell, and I've got the Joker. So that's cool. I, I like these guys. These these guys are cool. I wish it would have been just a normal Maxwell. I could have gone for a normal one without the Green Lantern thing, and his skin is a little oddly colored, but 
it's still a cool collectible. I'm still happy to have it. And it comes with free digital comics. So I mean, hey, I'm, I'm all for that. So that's cool. Should probably talk about Batman Eternal itself. Um, probably the... Uh, there's actually a decent amount to talk about here, but... Uh, let me just show you guys a little picture of the first page of this comic. That's quite a way to open it up. Oh, gee, I don't know quite how I feel about that. <laughs> oh, it's so much destruction. And I'm all for that, but I wish they wouldn't show me all of it going on right immediately. I could have waited a little longer. I didn't need to see how... I didn't need to see an image of the last few issues. It even says the end. It says the end. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so talking about the comic itself, um, I I liked this first issue. I mean, it wasn't maybe anything amazing, but it looks like it's setting up to something that's going to be kind of completely insane and incredible, which is what I sincerely hope the series is going to be. So the series opens. Uh, there's a new cop on the Gotham City um, Police Department. His name is Jason Bard. He looks like the calculator. <laughs> he, he does. He looks a little like a young Noah Cutler. And that, that kind of makes me worried about him. <laughs> uh, so he turns up in Gotham. Uh, he meets some of the members of the police force, including um, Major What's-His-Name. Uh, who, the guy whose name uh, in real role I can never remember. Major Forbes, I think. Yeah, Major Forbes. Harvey Bullock. Um, Maggie. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? See, see, this is why I shouldn't be going right. Maggie Sawyer. Uh, the lesbian. The lesbian. <laughs> um, so, you know, it looks like he's going to be one of the supporting members of the cast, so. That's cool. He looks likable. Uh, Gordon got him in specifically. Gordon had asked for him himself. Uh, and then we see Gordon in a firefight with Professor Pig, who I don't know much of anything about. I, I understand he's a fairly recent Batman villain. I don't know how recent, admittedly. If I'm remembering right, I think he was made by Grant Morrison, but I could be completely mistaken. This is the, like, second comic I've ever seen him in, and the only other one was, uh, in Batman Incorporated, The Leviathan Strikes, so, and he didn't play a major, major role in that, it was, it, w it was a little more minor, so, yeah, I couldn't tell you much about him, except that I do know he's supposed to be really violent and ultra scary, because there was some concern about having him in a kid's show, like, Beware the Batman, so, alright, alright, fair enough, fair enough, and, he was trying to spread a disease to some children, so... Alright, I can buy that he is a pretty legitimate threat. Batman goes to track him down. Gordon uh, is chasing his men, and he fires at one. And when he goes to fire at him, he, like, basically disables a switch in the Gotham Underground. And it causes two trains to collide, and... They said we'd be lucky if there are only a couple hundred dead. That's, that's, that's being hopeful. And Gordon was arrested. So, they're, this was not, they are not taking their time. They are getting right into it. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally fine with that. It's just, wow, that, that was quick. Although, like, they did say Batman's going to be on the wrong side of the police throughout this matter, so that's a good way to do it. You get rid of Gordon very quickly and you get rid of him in a truly uh, unsettling way. Although, like, is no one, no one's going to call bullshit on this? Because, I mean, we're in Gotham. I, I mean, Scarecrow Toxin is a known chemical. He, he easily could have been under the effect. He fired at a guy who he thought was armed, but wasn't. 
So, I mean, why is no one else calling, like, you know, Scarecrow Toxin, obviously? They probably will later. From what I know about these writers, I'm hopeful that they will address that later. I hope so. <laughs> this comic had one, two, three, four, five, six writers on it. Wow, I wonder how many of those people... I wonder how many were writers and how many were illustrators. Because the art... The art's really good, but it's maybe a little too grizzled for me. I'm usually not a fan of, like... Alright, so let's just take a page out of here. Like, okay, yeah, kind of look at something like that. And I actually have... This was the preview issue for Batman Eternal, so let's crack one of those pages open and compare. See? Okay, yeah, it's a little more like that. It's it's a little cleaner. Not so much grit. I like grit on some things, but I don't usually like too much of my comics. So it's a little too much detail for my liking, but it doesn't take away from the story. I still really enjoyed uh this this seems like a really smart setup to a year-long event. And I hope the rest of the issues follow suit. I'm very excited for this now. I think this is going to be a really good series, and I look forward to seeing more of it. So I think that about covers what I think of the first issue. I'll be back next week and let you know what I think of the second.